35 years ago, I began an ongoing dialogue with the great film artists of our generation. Tonight, that conversation continues. This is Professor Richard Brown, and this is Movies 101. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you guys for coming tonight. This is, um, this is a very special evening for me. I get an opportunity to have a conversation with one of my favorite actresses. She is an extraordinary talent. As a producer, which some of you may not have known, and as an actress, which everybody in this room knows. Um, we're gonna talk about something that we touch on almost every session of this class, which is the nature of fame. But more important probably than fame is the nature of how somebody develops into an artistic person, a creative person, and how somebody overcomes the obstacles that every person in this room has in order to do their work and to create their art. And we're very, very lucky tonight, and I feel very privileged tonight. Would you give a warm welcome to Ms. Jennifer Aniston. Jen. Thank you so much for doing this. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, this really is a special joy. We're going to start out. We've got a lot of projects that you have that you're involved in and that you're going to be doing over the next few months. But I want to, let's, let's take it back to the beginning, to the point where you decided that this was what you wanted to do for a living. Okay. When you were a youngster and you had a great talent in art mm. and you went in New York. You I wouldn't say great York. talent. You had a substantial talent in art. Okay. You had a talent that other, well, you did, you were 11 years old and you did a painting and it, it was hanging in the Metropolitan Museum of Art. I think that's impressive. That's nuts. Yeah. The, the germ was there. You, yes. you might have gone in that direction, okay? <laughs> okay. But you then decided to go in this direction. You ended up at the High School of Performing Arts in New York. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a terrific, legendary school, and the, the movie Fame was based on that high school, the high school that Jennifer went to. Do you remember a point in your life where you just said, this is the direction I'm going to go? This is where I want to spend my life, as an actress. Yeah, I do. It was pretty much right, right as I was, uh, right when I knew I was going to go to Performing Arts. I knew that's what I'm. You're about 15 one, years old. About 15, something like yeah. that. Yeah. It was one of those thoughts where you actually just say, "There's, I really don't think I can do anything else. I don't want to do anything else." So it was kind of clear. And you know, I watched. I grew up in, within my family, so I was sort of. I had the bug. I had the bug. Well, your dad was an actor. Yes. And he was is an actor. Mm -hmm. And he was on the soap opera. He still is. Yeah. Is on the soap opera. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he's on Days of Our Lives. Yeah, he's on Days of Our Lives. Yeah. How, how long has he been on that 102 show? 102 years. Yeah. 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 I think after his 100th year, they gave him that gold they watch. They gave him that gold watch. Yeah, he I finally got the gold watch. Yeah. yeah. And so you go to your dad and you say, all right, I know what you do for a living. I see it. I think that's where I want to spend my life. I think I want to do the same thing that you're doing. How did he react? And then the sheer panic crossed his face. Really? Oh, yeah. He did not want me to do this at all. And, you know, if, I, mean, I think any good father who, who understands how hard this business can be, you know, you want to, your child to avoid any possible heartache, rejection, unnecessary suffering that yeah. they possibly can. So please go and be a doctor or a lawyer yeah. and do something that will bring you, oh, such joy and happiness. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you get from New York to Los Angeles? What was the point where you made that transition? Um, I was tired of waitressing. And as much as I loved it, I mean, I did enjoy being a waitress, but I really just sort of thought I couldn't get hired, I couldn't get a commercial to save my life, I couldn't get a job except for some theater that, I mean, let's face it, it's great, it's artistic, it's a creative outlet, but it don't pay no rent. <laughs> so, you know, I, I um, basically decided to move to California. Well, I didn't decide to move, I went to visit my father. <clears throat> so I said I will not move. I won't, I don't know why I had this very 
stuck up idea of you can't be one of those that moves to LA to try to make yeah. it. So I thought yeah. I would just be on a long vacation. Yeah. <laughs> so I came out here to visit my dad and visit my dad and visit my dad. <laughs> and then and then I got a I got a job. I was telemarketing. And thank God that only had was two weeks. I'd be awful selling um, timeshares in the Poconos, upsetting people like <laughs> terribly, and and them just and me just being with the worst at it because I just apologized profusely and hang up the phone and you know because um, it was like a little bit of almost a scam. I mean, it, it was real time. Oh, yeah. It was real. Well, they don't even they see people like me and they're like, oh, she's good because she doesn't understand that it's a scam. Yeah. <laughs> so you're the perfect so salesperson. Great. You're the yeah. perfect salesperson. Anyway, um, so I then got a television show that was on the air for six episodes, and what was that? So it was a series. It was a series. It was called uh, Malloy. And then that went off the air, and I went, "Wow, that was great! What's next?" Now back to the poker. Now back to the, you know, <laughs> no, I was sort of fine, and I got an apartment. This sort of kept going from there. So after that, you did a couple of series. Mm -hmm. Were you also going up for feature films? Were you also toying with that idea of doing features? Oh no. When is I, I don't think I could get into those auditions. So you really didn't think you were at that level, or, no. some, or, or your agent wouldn't send you out for something? We'll like never that. know. I mean, I guess he will, <laughs> but I mean, I'm, I'm not with him anymore. Yeah. Obviously. No, um, but um, I, can, um, I can ask him. I'm not really quite sure why. I think it's also them going, "Who? No, next." You know, yeah. that happens, and you yeah. just see it's that catch twenty two. You just wait until finally you. Yeah. You yeah. get something, or you're in something that then you get that little window. All right, let's talk about the little window of friends. Yes. When that. Um <laughs> so, so they let uh, a couple of you know the show then, I guess. <laughs> um, when you first went up for that, you didn't start, you didn't audition initially, or they didn't ask you to come in for Rachel. No, Is Monica. Right? You came in for Monica. Yeah, no, I Why? knew I didn't want to play Monica. Right. I just want, I just felt more connected to Rachel. Um, you know, she was kind of the, you know, everything I wasn't, sort of the, the rich, you know, spoiled princess from a, f a family with who had everything. She never really had to work. She kind of, um, you know, I just kind of thought, thought that was more interesting for me to play than, than the Monica part. And they agreed. They obviously they agreed. Did. And Court wanted to go in for Monica, not Rachel. She was supposed to go in for Rachel, and she didn't want to. So you basically... So we do -si doed When you started to become famous, and then very famous, uh -huh. how did your friends handle that? What was their reaction? So thrilled. There was Truly thrilled. Truly thrilled. Really thrilled. And suddenly, you're very, very big. If I want to go to Disney World, I just go to Disney World. Yeah. You can't. Well. well you can't. <laughs> no, you can't. You can, but you don't want to do. <laughs> you can do anything you want. It's just a matter of you. Know. There, there's a lot of things that you could do before. You just you can't do. It's the price, the price that you pay. Yeah. It's like the great uh, this Jimmy Burroughs story. Who's uh, yeah. Jim Burroughs? Who's one of the great television directors of our time and created, you know, Cheers and Taxi and was basically uh, our first director for the first year of Friends. Right when we were about to start shoot filming the show, we did had promos on and a little bit, little teasers here and there, and he flew us all in the Warner jet to Vegas. And we thought, wow, this is going to be great. Going on a plane, and we go to Vegas, and he sits us down at, at Spago's, at Caesar's Palace, and he looks each and every one of us in the eye, and he says, you know, you all have to really, really take care of each other, because this is going to be a ride. There will be people that will say really mean things. There will be people that will praise you. There, you have to just be prepared for everything, and you have to really take care of each other. And then as we're walking out of the restaurant, we're walking towards the casino, he basically hands us all $500. And he said, now, go into that casino and enjoy yourselves, because it's the last time you'll be walking into a casino without, mm. with your anonymity. So, and he was right. <laughs> and it's just the reality of it. Do you remember that point in those early years when what Jim Burroughs said to you?